how to make some Viking turn shoes using my shoe kit. In your kit, you should have two soles, two uppers, and two laces. You also need waxed thread, some needles, I use Glover's needles, pliers, a scratch awl, scissors, and a layer. To begin, take some of the thread, about two arms lengths. This should be enough to get you about halfway around the shoe. Then thread both of your needles. Start by threading through the eye, then sew back through a bit of the thread at the end. Then take some of the thread that is going through that hole and sew through that. This will lock your needle onto the thread so that you don't have to worry about losing them later. Do the same thing with the other needle on the other side of the thread. Now you have both of your needles on the same thread. First we have to match the shoe uppers with their soles. The outer curvature, the larger curve, is going to match up with the sole that it goes with, as shown here. Make sure that the suede sides are touching. Now flip them inside out because this is a turn shoe and we're going to sew it inside out. We're going to begin sewing at the tip right here. Get your needles. Start by sewing in the sole, going out towards where the upper will be. Then sew through the upper part in the first hole in the corner. Take both of your needles together in the same hand and pull them tight so that the thread is even on both sides. Then take the needle that's on the side of the sole and go through the second hole in the sole. We are going to be doing what's called a saddle stitch. So both needles will go through both holes each time. Now take the needle from the far side, the one that went through both the sole and the upper from before, and go back through the upper and then back through the sole. Pull your stitch tight. This is your first saddle stitch. The entirety of the shoe will be sewn in this way. Always going through the hole with one needle and then back through the same holes on the other side with the other needle. If the needle is hard to push through, you can always use the scratch awl to help you push. Just be careful not to stab yourself. way and you need help to pull through, you can use the pliers. Once you've sewn the heel, it should curve naturally. This is following the pattern of the upper. The sole of the heel will curve. Continue sewing as you did before until you get to the very last hole on the toe. At this point, we're now going to bring the other half of the shoe up and around to meet the first half. We want the outside edge to be on top when we reverse it, so it's going to go inside for now. So like you would normally through the sole, and then through the hole of the upper, and then through the second hole of the other half of the upper like so. When we come back the other way, we're going to do the same but reverse through the second half of the upper, then the upper, and then finally through the sole. 
remember to pull your stitches tight. Continue now as you did before. When you finally run out of thread, take both needles on the side of the upper and tie a knot. Tie a second knot. Now you're going to cut about a centimeter away from where the knot is. You can put your needles aside. Take your lighter. Carefully, set the ends of the thread on fire, let them burn down to the knot, and then smush the wax so that it seals the knot. Then, get out your second piece of thread. About as long as the first one, but it can be slightly shorter. Take off what remained of the thread from the needles. Rethread them as you did before, one on each end. Start sewing again through the same hole where you finished. First go through the sole, and then through the upper. Take both of your needles again and pull them tight to make sure that the thread is even on both sides. Continue sewing as you did before. When you get to the heel, it's going to start getting tricky as the shoe will be mostly closed. But you can just keep sewing as you did before. Once you're in the last hole in the corner, sew it as you normally would. You can decide if you like to tie off here, doing a double knot and then cutting and burning as we did before. You can also choose to sew back through the holes. And tie off one hole back. Make a double knot against the upper. Cut about a centimeter away. Take your lighter, carefully light the ends, let them burn down, and smush. Ta-da! Now we're done sewing the upper to the sole. Now we need to turn the shoe inside out, for it is a turn shoe. This isn't very difficult. The, sh the shoe materials are quite soft, so all you have to do is just push with your fingers. You don't even need to get it wet. I usually start with the toe, and then I go to the heel. You may find that the stitches create little bubbles in the sole. This is normal, and they can be worked out with your hands, like so. If this doesn't do the trick, wearing the shoes while wet will smooth out the soles. Alright, so now we need to sew up the front, this seam here. So we're going to get out another piece of thread. Usually, I use about four times the length of the seam. When I thread the needles for this, we don't need them to be super locked onto the thread, so I only sew through the thread one time instead of two times. Once you've sewn through the thread once, pull it all the way to the end. This will create a very light lock instead of a tight lock like before. Do this to the both needles. We're going to be doing a saddle stitch through this part again, so we're going to start by sewing through the top hole, then the bottom hole. Put the needles together, pull them tight so that the thread is even on both sides. Then take the top needle and sew through the second hole on both the top and the bottom. Now we take the bottom needle from the other side and sew through the bottom hole and the top hole. Stitch tight. 
continue in this manner along the seam. Once you come to the end, finish the last stitch like all of the others, pull it tight, and then go back one stitch. With the upper needle, and then take the lower needle and go back on the inside so that both of your needles are coming out through the side of the seam. Pull them tight and make a double knot. Cut about a centimeter away as before, light them on fire and smush. All right, now all we have to do is attach the lace. To attach the lace, take one of the laces, find the end that has the hole in it. Now look at the two tabs. One of them has a hole that has a little slit. The other one does not. This one is where this is gonna be threaded through. Take the end of the lace with the slit and thread it through. Then take the rest of the lace and put it through the slit. Draw it as tight as you can, forming a tight loop. Now we'll thread the lace through the hole on the side. Then the hole in the back. Now we need to measure where the knot will go. Pull it through the tab that has the slit. With the shoe on your foot, draw the lace through the final hole so that it's secure around your ankle. Then to make the knot, fold it over at the top, wrap it around, and put it back through. Tighten the knot so that it's snugly against the hole. If the slit is too tight, you can open it a bit with a knife. Your shoe is ready to wear. In order to take the shoe off, pull the knot back through the hole with the slit. Then, loosen the lace by pulling on the other tab. In order to put the shoe on, do the reverse. Pull the lace tight, and then put it through the tab with the slit. As the shoe stretches of the age, you can adjust the lace to be tighter by adjusting the placement of the knot. Ta-da! You've made your Viking turn shoe.